Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about OpenPy Excel, one of the libraries of Python primarily focusing on interacting with Excel. The way OpenPy Excel works is that it loads a file in memory, makes appropriate changes and then it saves back as Excel. Unlike Excel Wings where we can interact live with Excel. In today's video, we will go through some of the most useful methods, functions OpenPy Excel has to offer. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. Alright, so let's jump right into it. So we have Jupyter Notebook started up. So there's one heads up here. It says that OpenPy Excel does not support CSV file format. So what you will need to do is load up an XLSX file. So it will not work with CSV file formats. Okay, let me quickly restart and clear output. First thing we will do is we will load in all of the imports. So the first one is the main library. The other ones are the subsections of smaller items we need from that library. And the last one I have, this is my custom module. I can share it with you guys. Uh, I created it to help speed up my own work. Alright, so let me run this. Second step, step is we will load in the workbook, we will apply freeze and filter. So if the file is in the same directory as the code is, you can just give it the file name like I have given here, walmart.xlsx. Right, you can do is the way you load an Excel file in Open by Excel is you give it a variable name. So here we are giving it WB as in workbook equals by Excel. The same abbreviation we loaded it with dot load workbook and give it the file name. If this file is in a different directory than the code, then you will have to give it the full file name. All right. So if your Excel file only has one worksheet, you can use let me do this here. You can use WS, WS is for worksheet equals workbook.active. But if you have multiple sheet names, multiple tabs, you can give it the exact name. And it's always a good idea to give it the exact name. So here we can do is WS equals WB. And in square brackets, you will give it the tab name or sheet name. So the empty sheet is empty and the test data has our sample data in it. Right, so let's load it here and let's see what it stores in WS. Okay, so it's saying worksheet test underscore data. So it has correctly saved in worksheet, correctly loaded this in memory. Okay, all right, so first thing we need to do is apply freeze and filter. All right, let me remove filter from here. So I've just opened this workbook as a sample so you can see what we're doing. Let me quickly remove this from here. Okay. All right. So we need to know what is the maximum column and what is the maximum row. Okay. So the way we get we can get the maximum column number is we can do worksheet ws dot max underscore column. And then there's a function that converts this column number to column letter because the way we will give filter to open by Excel is using the column column letter instead of the column number. So if I run this, this says max column is 16 and the alphabet or the letter for the column 16 is column P. So let's see if it's true. So here I selected this and you can see there's 16 columns and the relevant column letter is column P. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so if you want to see how many worksheets are in the workbook, you can do is for sheet in wb.worksheets and then print sheet. Let's run this. Okay, so it's, it's giving us two worksheets, which is correct. As per the file op we have open here, test underscore data, empty underscore sheet. All right, let's comment this line out. And since we have the 
correct list of worksheets being pulled up we can loop through them we can apply the freeze let me comment this freeze and the second one we're gonna do is filter okay so freeze is pretty simple what you're gonna do is since you are storing the worksheet as a sheet instead of WS you will use sheet to apply any action towards this so sheet or freeze panes equals a2 so what I normally do is I use I apply filter the first row so for that you will use a2 a2 will means that it will apply a freeze here okay for filter you will have to build up a different for range so for that what we can do is let's copy this and let's test it out here for that we will have to change uh, sheet to ws worksheet because the sheet variable is within the loop just not going to work up, up here All right so let's see what the full range it's creating let me pull up okay so it has created the range as a1 through p502 let's see if this is correct so a1 and if i do control n it's going to pull it down here so column p row 502 it means that this has pulled up the correct range okay so you have created the range in the full range variable and then you're gonna do is sheet dot auto filter dot reference equals full range so let's run this okay so it's obviously not going to show here but it has applied the freeze and the filter all right let's move on to fix header formatting so what i normally do is whenever i create new excel files from any kind of different analysis maybe it's coming from pandas or downloaded from some database i would like to format it to show it in a better form or for a reporting point of view okay so for that we will do what we will need is we will need to loop through all of the non-empty values in row one and then we will need to change its color and change its font okay so let's try to figure out what is the min and the max column of this spreadsheet so it says that uh, the minimum column is one and the max column is 16 which is correct okay so now what, now what we are going to do is we will iterate through whole first column and we will do is for rows in ws.iter rows we will get minimum row as ws.min row max row as ws.min row because we just want to look through the first row so both of these min and max rows will be min row which is min row is row 1 and the min column is also 1 and the max column is 16 so this is going to loop through first row and column 1 through 16 then what we will need to do is we will need to access a specific cell in each row so it will be rows for cell in rows because the row has one specific row saved and then for cell in rows that is accessing the one cell of each row so first iteration it will be this then this this and this so on and so forth all right then we are going to do is cell dot fill so this is going to fill the cell with the color we select here so let me do this yeah so it's a bit easier So we'll use pattern fill, start color equals this, end color equals this, and fill type equals solid. You can look up these colors from the Google, you will find these, what these colors are. Then you are going to change the font color. You're gonna make this as this color. And then you are going to make it bold equals true, and italic equals false, so you're going to make it bold. Let's run this as well. Okay, this runs fine now let's move on to fixed column width and date formats all right okay so this is where my custom module comes in 
uh, as you might have seen that the get column letter only accepts one column or one variable at a time but uh, what I wanted was to accept a list and then loop through it so I created a custom module and I imported it up here open by excel get column letter module and then I'm using a function from there for column in get columns letter and here I'm up passing it the two columns which have date format which needs to be fixed so these two columns are actually date columns but I need them in format like let's say if I do short date so I want them in this format okay let me control Z we can go back to this format so we're giving it a list of columns and we're giving it a worksheet name so the worksheet we stored in WS now we are going to tell it to change the width of each column each of these columns which we gave it as a list so we'll say is worksheet dot column dimensions here in square bracket we are giving it the column variable this variable is going to store each column one by one so the first iteration it will have date started the second iteration it will have days since start and it will set the width to 11 and then and then each column you will loop through all of the cells so in first iteration the column name is date started and for cell in this column it's going to loop through all of the cells so it's going to, going, it's going to go like this and change format for each of the rows okay let's run this as well you can change this format to any other format you like right so the last one we have is we want to change the row color of all of the rows where the name count is greater than five so the name count is basically the count of how many times the name column has a specific value so for example if we have four here and if we filter this to current cells value it's showing four different values so it means that this store name is appearing in four different rows in this data set so we just want to apply specific color to all of the rows where this number is greater than five we can do that using openpy excel so we are defining a variable in which we are giving it colors name so we are defining a variable yellow and giving it the color code okay let me remove this tidy this up a bit all right so let me first show you how we can loop through the whole column so we will do is for cell in worksheet ws we saved worksheet in this then we give it n it's not going to be n n1 is going to be n and then if i uncomment this we can see what is looping it through okay so it's looping through this column n and it's showing uh, as a formula so what we need to do is we need to paste this as values and then we need to reload all of this so let's do this really quick all right so i restarted and then all, all of it again and if i pull it here okay as you can see is that it's looping through all of the individual values here one two three four going like this so you can see three here and then two here right so let me comment this and let me uncomment this section so what I'm saying is try we have a try except so in case some value is not being converted to float it's not going to crash all of our code so it's saying is if it's converting each of the it's taking each of the value converting it to float then it's checking if it's greater than 5 and if it is then it's going to we're going to remove this we don't need to print each of the value and then if the value is greater than 5 and it's going to fill all of the columns of that row with the specific color right let me run this 
and let's uh, save it so what I'm doing is it is save as a new file where it says fixed at the end so we can match it side by side to see if it really created a new file okay here you can see it created a new file which we added here Walmart 2018 6 11 6 fixed okay let's match it side by side with this file okay as you can see to edit the freeze and filter then it added the conditional uh, formatting for the first column first row and then let's see if it highlighted all of the rows where the value is greater than 5 okay it seems like it did not do it let me run this again and save this file again okay since uh, it loops through each of the row it's, it sometimes takes a bit of a time okay so it created the file again let's see if it added the format for the column for all of the rows where the value is greater than 5 okay seems like it worked so this row has name count as 6 and it highlighted all of the columns of that row with this color let's move on see if it created highlighted anymore yeah okay so it did so here we can see this is 6 we have more and seems like this is working alright so that's it for this video if you like the video please click like and subscribe and if you have any questions please add them in the comment section thank you